we're going to have a discussion about bacterial morphology and shape. And this characteristic about bacteria is very important in terms of naming of the bacteria, uh, defining the bacteria, and helping to classify according to uh, various qualities that we have been discussing in the last few lectures. So the morphology and shape can take on uh, various qualities, uh, including these uh, spheres and also the comma structures and uh, the uh, appearance of the flagella. And also they can look like spiral uh, worms. So in terms of the classification, they're based on several major properties, the cell wall, the morphology, metabolic behavior, infection patterns, whether or not they're obligated to be intracellular or antigenic composition and DNA sequence. Now, we are discussing each one of these characteristics separately in, in several lectures. So today we're actually gonna talk about morphology. Future lectures will talk about the other qualities. So the classification really of bacteria is, is a very challenging endeavor. We've discussed that in other lectures. And the reason it's so challenging is because bacteria are very complicated. They're complicated in terms of how they live, how they reproduce, how they acquire characteristics that they didn't have before. They don't engage in sexual reproduction. They engage in various forms of budding and sharing of DNA and so forth that are different from the classical reproductive patterns that occur in other animals. So higher organisms, as we know, are classified according to visible anatomical criteria. And these classical criteria are what are, form the basis of zoology and taxonomy. So b bacterial species, as I mentioned, some of them are very similar to one another, but they and and they recombine into new strains that again have not occurred before. Classifying these strains of bacteria really can't be done morphologically because they don't look that different from one another. However, biochemically, they behave very differently. But on the other hand, these morphological differences do exist between major groups of bacteria and they're important to understand in relationship to classification. So these variations in shapes and distributions, so it's not just the shape that varies, but also how these bacteria are organized together. So we can of course have singular uh, bacteria. Uh, now the coxy shape uh, refers to a rounded spherical shape. And you can see they, they can occur singularly, they can occur just two of them, the diplococci, uh, and they can occur in pairs surrounded by a membrane, or actually it's not even a membrane, it's a capsule, so we'll see those as well. You can have these staphylococci, which are an, a, a grouping of cocci. You can have streptococci, which are basically linear arrangements of these coxy shapes and so forth. Now the bacilli, that's another word. Bacilli is another word for rod, okay? And these rod-shaped bacteria or bacilli can also be arranged uh, singularly. They can be arranged um, in chains and they can be arranged in these structures called palisades, and they can also be arranged in angles from one another. We can have these buddings, different kinds of appendages in bacteria. We can have these vibrio shapes, which are like commas. We can have a corkscrew form, and we can have a filamentous form. So all of these forms actually also help to name the bacteria. So some of the bacteria are named truly according to their shape and their arrangement. So here is how uh, bacteria are actually arranged. And of course they're arranged 
by how they reproduce. So for instance, these chains are where we have the cell division of bacteria that occur in one plane. And when that happens, they form these chains. We can have them, the reproduction or the cell division, of course, occur in packets where the replication, the division actually occurs perpendicular to one another. And then they form these nice uh, symmetrical packets. And then we can have clusters, which is more of a random arrangement where these cells divide in various different planes. So then you get uh, a cluster. So again, the shapes of bacteria, you can't learn, you can't see that enough. And once it's ingrained in you, you will truly remember these. And when the exam comes along, you'll score an A plus as far as remembering bacteria according to shape. So we have, again, the pneumococci. So remember, they have that capsule surrounding the two, diplo. We have streptococci, which are chains. We have staph that are, remember, the cell division is random, so they get into these clusters. We have mycobacterium tuberculosis, which we'll talk about later on. And those are bacilli-shaped right, in chains. We have spores, and then we have these spirochetes, or spirals. So the bacterial shapes can essentially assume uh, one of three qualities, or one of three shapes. Uh, they can be spheres, they can be rods, and they can be curved. And the names, the, the, all the spheres are called coxy. The rod-like shapes that are called bacilli or bacillus, and the curved shapes are called vibrio uh, or spirillium or the spirochetes. So, but within those three basic shapes are considerable variation. And also these cells can be stretched or compressed, and certainly when they're visualized, they can change shape and so forth. But in general, they can be arranged according to one of these three uh, shapes. So bacteria, now, as I, as I mentioned before, the way they cluster together has to do with the way they engage in cell division. So they can form clusters, they can form chains, and all of that is related to how they divide. So again, to repeat that, so some cocci in relationship to dividing always are found in pairs, and those are known as diplococci. And we saw that there were strepto Caucus pneumoniae, which is a pneumonia bacteria, and we also have Neisseria gonorrhea, which is a gonococcus. And we'll be talking about these groups of bacteria quite frequently in other lectures. So here we have the Streptococcus pneumoniae, and you can see the capsule that surrounds these gram-positive bacteria. They are always arranged in pairs. Now remember, gram-positive, what is gram-positive? That's where that cell wall is on the outside. So we always have to go back to the beginning and remember what these qualities are because it'll help you remember, absolutely. So these diplococci are two spherical shaped bacteria and in relationship to the pneumoniae, they are surrounded with a capsule. So these streptococci, remember, are long strands of beads. So they're, they're arranged, as you can see in this uh, histogram, uh, they're arranged in these linear shapes. The staph are arranged in random clusters. How do that, how does that occur? Remember, it occurs through how they, in what pattern they actually engage in cell division. So one way that I like to think about, so I like to think about how the streptococci are different from the staphylococci, and we'll get to that question example uh, at the end of the lecture. But these kinds of terms are really important to remember, and unfortunately, they sound very similar. So you have to stop for a second and tune in and remember what they mean. So these coxal bacteria can occur in square or cuboidal 
packets. Now remember again, that has to do with how they divide. The rod-shaped bacilli are long chain. They can become long changed. They can also be single. They can also be on their own. And they can also acquire, or they can actually be arranged in these uh, angles from one another. And sometimes the angles can be random, but they still have that rod-like shape. So that's very different from the coxy shape. And uh, the bacilli, of course, have pointed ends and they're comma-shaped. And so these comma-shaped rods then are known as Vibrio. And these Vibrio, for instance, Vibrio cholera is a very important uh, waterborne bacteria and it causes the disease cholera, and we'll be certainly talking about cholera in other lectures in the course, but you can see sometimes the Vibrio have flagella and sometimes they don't. So to continue with our shapes, we can have the spirilla shape, which are bent. So here's an example of the spirilla, and you can see it can be twisted and it's surrounded by uh, a, a cell, you know, cytoplasmic material. And then the spirochetes are a corkscrew looking bacteria and they form a helix and the helix is formed around the axial filament. So we'll see examples of them in other discussions. So the first question has to do with what is the difference between streptococci and staphylococci. Now again, they sound very similar, but one way that I like to, uh, that reminds me of what streptococci is, I, is I, I think about the word strepto, and to me that sounds a lot like street, and streets are usually straight, so streptococci is really a linear arrangement of these spherical bacteria, Whereas the staff, remember, is more of a random arrangement, and the random arrangement often looks like clusters of grapes. So the difference between the two, I mean, they certainly have other differences in terms of infection patterns and so forth, but as far as the shape, they both are coxy. However, they're arranged in different ways. Now, how do the groupings of bacteria originate. We talked about that in a couple of slides. They have to do with the cell division. So remember, if the cell division occurs in a, in a plane, in the same plane, they're arranged in chains. If they occur perpendicular to one another, they form those nice symmetrical packets. And if they're random, they occur now, what I mean by random is that the plane of cell division is random, then the clustering is random as well. So that's actually how the groupings occur based on the way the cells divide. Now, the third question is, what is the difference between staphylococci and staphylobacteria? Now, this is a trick question. So we're gonna go through and dissect exactly how this is a trick question. And these are the kinds of questions that if you know the material really well, you'll see the flaw in the question. And that's really important. So first of all, let's dissect staphylococci. Now remember, coxy is the rounded shape. And remember the staff, and you can remember the staff if you also remember the strep. Now remember the strep are in linear chains and the staph are in random clusters. So the staphylococci really are random clusters. Okay, so then the next one is staphylobacilli. Now you're gonna say, oh, okay, staphylobacilli, that must be a random arrangement of bacilli. Wrong. Remember, we don't have staphylobacilli However, we have streptobacilli, okay? And what is strep now? It's a linear arrangement. Now, what is bacilli? Those are rods. It's a linear arrangement of rods. So if you're faced with a question like this, you know straight off the bat, 
the question is not correct. Thank you so much for visiting educator.com.